On today's Prophecy in the News, we're going to talk about the prophecies of the sun. The sun is mentioned many times throughout the Bible. In particular, of course, is the time when the sun goes out and the moon turns to blood. Sackcloth of hair, I think one place calls it, sackcloth of ashes in another. Gary's written an article uh, for our August 2009 edition of Prophecy in the News magazine. It's called Prophecies Under the Sun. Gary Stimman is here to tell us about it. Well, J.R., the thing that led me to write this article, which is also a study in prophecy, is what I call solar phobia. Today, uh, scientists on Earth are very worried about the sun. They are saying it's, something's gone wrong. In fact, a respected uh, astronomical journal, uh, Sky and Telescope, you and I both read that magazine, very authoritative, and uh, it had a big picture of the sun on the cover. And with the headline, What's Wrong with the Sun? And, and it was a very worried uh, kind of article saying, that in effect, if the sun doesn't hurry up and get back on its sunspot schedule, we could be experiencing some great difficulty. That is, uh, the sun ordinarily goes through an 11-year cycle, uh, and the sunspot rate rises and falls, according to that cycle, 22 years in all. And the cycle is thought to be, quote, unquote, normal, meaning mm -hmm. Earth's weather and everything will be just fine. Well, that hasn't been happening lately. The sun is absolutely quiet, no sunspots, and there is some fear that that could adversely affect Earth's weather, its environment. So there's great fear about the sun. Well, it's been going on for a couple of years now, hasn't it? Actually, more than a couple of years, about four years. Wow. <coughs> yeah. Now, when the sun is quiet like this, the temperature is not as hot as normal. That's that right. correct? Mm -hmm. So it, uh, they're, what, they're worried about there might be uh, an ice age coming up? Well, it's called the Maunder Minimum. Uh, uh, centuries ago, there was a uh, period called the Little Ice Age. And a British astronomer by the name of Maunder uh, followed the sunspot cycle. <clears throat> and he equated a period of low sunspots with cooling on the Earth's surface. And in fact, the, the, uh, the coolest recent period was the Little Ice Age back in the uh, 16th century when crops wouldn't grow in Europe. And people literally were worried about starving to death because Every place you planted a seed, it would just stay there. There wasn't enough uh, temperature, enough rainfall, and so forth to keep it going. And scientists are now saying, uh-oh, what if that happens? Well, this illustrates to me the great dependence that we have upon the sun. The sun is 99.85% of all the mass in our solar system. That leaves 0.15% for the rest of the planets. Everything else is only 0.15%. The sun is dominant. And Solomon said that life under the sun is the norm. In other words, when he preached that famous sermon in Ecclesiastes, he said, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Ecclesiastes 114. 29 times he mentions life under the sun. And Solomon was trying to get across this idea that life is regulated by the sun. Well, now, you know, Al Gore and other people, the environmentalists, have been preaching for years. I use the word preach in a secular sense there, hammering on us yes. from the news media that the world is getting warmer and warmer. We've got to do something. When, and, of course, they don't blame it on the sun. They blame it on all of those, those little uh, automobiles and using fossil fuels, spitting mm -hmm. out, uh, puttering out uh, stuff, you know, that's collecting up in our atmosphere. And the world's going to get warmer and warmer. Well, at the same time, for the last, you're saying, nearly four years, God has just sort of turned the s spigot off on yes. the sun, and there are no <laughs> storms up there. Therefore, there's no heat, uh, at least no normal uh, heat rays coming, no warmth. Now, of course, we experience some days this summer that are over 100 degrees. Mm -hmm. But looking at it overall, uh, the world's not as warm as it normally is. Well, is it? for the last 10 years, coincident with the decrease in sunspots, 
of the Earth's temperature has been gradually falling. And uh, at this point in time, it seems logical to suggest that it, it's going to continue to do so. Uh, scientists are now worried about this little ice age kind of an event. Uh, and in this article, JR, what I've tr attempted to do is to, uh, to contrast secular faith in the solar planetary system versus the faith that we have in God. We realize, having faith in God, we realize the Bible has a lot to say about the sun, and invariably when the Bible talks about the sun, the sun is not just some free agent sitting there doing what it wants to do. The sun is actually controlled by the Lord, and nothing could be clearer than that. So you either have faith in science or you have faith in the Lord. Well, Gary, he's put the earth in orbit about the sun, not too close and not too far away, right. to give us an idyllic temperature. If there ever was a paradise in this universe, the earth is in its sweet spot, oh, yeah. so to speak. And so um, the Lord is definitely in control of the sun. Uh, but there are so many prophecies about the sun that you've dealt with in this article. I'd mm -hmm. like for you to share some of them with us. Well, uh, for one, uh, going back into the days of the Exodus. Now, the Exodus is kind of a uh, a capsule foreshadowing of the day of the Lord. The plagues of Egypt mm -hmm. are going to be played out in full during the day of the Lord. And one of the plagues of Egypt was darkness. Moses uh, stretched out his hands, Exodus 10, 21. Stretched his hands toward heaven. And uh, Exodus 10, 22 says, And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in the land of, in all the land of Egypt for three days. Now, it was so dark that people didn't even get up and go anywhere. They just sat in fear. It's interesting that the primary deity in Egypt was the sun god. Well, if the sun god removed mm -hmm. himself for three days, that was a catastrophe. Yeah. A and you have there a kind of a foreshadowing of the tribulation because uh, when the tribulation comes, somehow the sun and the moon are going to be affected negatively. It's going to get very dark. And at times the sun will get a little hotter than it should get. And men will be scorched, it says in the Bible. So we've got a time coming when the Lord is going to adjust solar radiation to achieve His ends. It's a judgment upon the wicked. Yes. It's a judgment on this world. God is in charge. If God could turn the lights out for three days, He can turn the light up as well, <laughs> when, or he can turn it dark again. Yeah, Jesus was on the cross, and, and as he died on the cross, it got dark. And it was not just your ordinary darkness. The, the text of the Bible makes it clear uh, there in Luke chapter 23 that it says it was the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour, and the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. This was not a cloud over the sun. It was not a solar eclipse. It was a supernatural darkening of the sun. I don't know how God did it, but He did it. And th that again is a foreshadowing of the judgment that is to come. It tells us that, that solar radiation is controlled not by the scientists with all their fancy equipment. It's controlled by God. Mm. Now, in the last year or so, we've been talking about the lunar eclipses and the solar eclipses that are coming in the year 2014, um, 2015, mm -hmm. and also the three solar eclipses last year, this year, and next year uh, during the month of July. And we feel that they uh, could have some uh, biblical uh, aspect in the fulfillment of prophecy because the Bible talks about the sun mm -hmm. turning dark and the moon turning to blood and so on. And of course, this particular month we've had two lunar eclipses with the solar eclipse in the middle, the really mm -hmm. interesting one uh, in uh, July. But God doesn't need, and I'm not, I'm not saying that those aren't important. I'm not discounting the importance of the solar and lunar eclipses. But God doesn't need the uh, moon to go in front of the sun. Right. Um, 
in order to have a solar eclipse. God can turn the lights out anytime He wants to, can't He? Well, you, you take the last prophecy in the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, For behold, the day cometh. Now, that's the day of the Lord. That's, that's when everything is really going to, going to be uh, variable. Everything, the natural law will be suspended, and the sun, moon, and stars will do things they've never done before. The day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Well, why would that day burn as an oven? It would burn as an oven because solar radiation would be turned up. That's one really good reason. And we've seen that that can happen. And all the proud, yea, and all the do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness, that's S-U-N, capital S, Son of Righteousness arise with healing in His wings. So here the natural sun in the sky is contrasted with the sun. That's the, the returning Jesus who is now the actual, He becomes the Son of Righteousness. You shouldn't have faith in old Saul up there, but you should have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ who is the actual Son of Righteousness. And this is Malachi's way of saying, if you, if you want to depend on something, don't depend on that sun up there. Depend on the other sun, the true sun. Mm. We know that the last days are going to have a lot of things happen in the solar system. Yeah. Uh, Jesus uh, talked about the uh, problems that would befall the earth and the sea and the waves roaring and men's hearts failing them for fear mm -hmm. because of those things. And uh, we're going to see problems in the heavens as well as on the earth. Um, in fact, this blood and fire and vapor of smoke that we yeah. hear about in uh, the prophets, uh, it's pretty scary. We're going, yeah. we're going to see some really bad things happen, at least the world will. I'm thinking we'll be raptured out of here before that. Oh, I think so. Now, it's my opinion that the sun, that two things happen to the sun during the tribulation. One is the actual radiation of the sun will be variable. Uh, sometimes it'll be cooler, sometimes it'll be hotter. But also, conditions in the Earth's atmosphere will blot out the sun and the moon. Now, this could be caused by nuclear explosions, and we know there's going to be a, a nuclear war, which could hurl debris into the air. Volcanoes. Uh, the Lord said that there will be earthquakes in that day. Well, earthquakes and volcanoes go hand in hand. And if the sky were filled with volcanic debris, the sun and the moon would be darkened. And J.R., Joel says in Joel 2.31, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Joel's talking about that period before the tribulation Malachi of that period, Malachi says, in that day, I'm going to send you Elijah. Listen to this. This is Malachi 4, 4 through 6. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, for all Israel, the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So, not only is the sun and the moon going to be variable in that day before the tribulation, but also Elijah is going to show up before the tribulation. Mm. So, we're looking at something strange here. Yeah, well, let's talk about the coming of Elijah for a few moments. The Jews have been expecting him to come during Passover. Yes. Tell us about that. <clears throat> well, every Passover, uh, when they do the Seder, the Jews uh, pour uh, four cups. That's mandatory in the Passover. A and that fourth cup, uh, which is a culminating cup, it's the cup of relationship when the Lord uh, is prophetically said to come back and to... to uh, uh, be received among his people. But at the very same time that cup is poured during the Seder, the cup of Elijah is poured. Those two cups are poured at the same point. And then the host reads these words, Pour your wrath upon the nations that do not recognize you, and upon the kingdoms that do not invoke your name, for they have devoured Jacob and destroyed his habitation. Pour your anger upon them, let your fiery wrath overtake them, 
and so forth and so on. I could read more, but you get the idea. When you pour the cup of Elijah, you speak mm -hmm. of the wrath of God during the tribulation. That's prophetic. So they're expecting him to come back around the battle of Gog and Magog, aren't right, they? Right, they are. And for the time of Jacob's trouble, the Jews are expecting Elijah to come. At the same time, they know the prophets talk about the sun uh, turning as dark, right. uh, as, as uh, black as sackcloth of ashes, and the moon turning as blood. We have these astronomical catastrophes that happen. And uh, Gary, that's the gist of your article here. I hope you'll get this magazine and read the article on Prophecies Under the Sun. It's the August 2009 edition of Prophecy in the News. Call the phone number at the bottom of your screen and order it today, will you? And by the way, it's $2.95, and we'll even pay the postage to send it to you. We want you to have this magazine. But I would like to encourage you to subscribe. For the next year, $34.95 will get you this sent to your mailbox every month for the next 12 months. And in addition to that, for your $34.95, we will give you $48 worth of books. That's what I said. I want to show them to you right here. Four of our finest books, Guardians of the Grail and the Men Who Plan to Rule the World. They Pierced the Veil and Saw the Future, Hidden Prophecies and the Song of Moses, and The Mystery of the Menorah and the Hebrew alphabet. These four books have a wealth of information in them, and they can be yours free if you'll subscribe to Prophecy in the News magazine for the next 12 months. Such a deal. I want you to call the phone number at the bottom of your screen, 1-800-475-1111, and order today, will you? Let us get this magazine out to you, and these four books, you will enjoy them. Gary? Well, J.R., to continue this discussion, <clears throat> while science is worried about a, a, a problem with the sun, they're trying to, to uh, let's say, adapt to any changes that it might come up with as, as though that would help, we know from reading about the tribulation that the Lord will control solar radiation as a matter of judgment. Revelation 8, 12 says, And the fourth angel sounded, and a third part of the sun was smitten third part of the moon, third part of the stars. So as a third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the, the night likewise. Now this is in the tribulation. This is not before the tribulation. In other words, all this trouble has begun before the tribulation. Here we have the fourth angel sounding his trumpet and somehow solar radiation is affected. We don't know exactly how that works. But the point is the sun is struck by something. That's the wording in, in the Greek language. Uh, and we have in Revelation 16 these words, The fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Revelation 16, 8 and 9. Now, we know that periodically the sun has explosions on its surface and, and huge megatons of par particulate matter are hurled out into space. And scientists have said that if one of those ever came past the earth and hit us, it could really scorch us badly and it could shut down all of our electrical grid uh, in a minute, mm. in, in no time at all. And uh, it would blow out transformers all over the world, which would take years to replace. Just if you, if you like to be frightened, that's a way to think about it. Mm. Wow. Well, you say here, uh, reading Revelation 8, 12, that the sun was smitten. And you said something's going to hit the sun. Tell us, yeah. what, is it, could it be an asteroid it that hits the sun? Be. Now, most of the solar flares that are, are the uh, sunspots on the sun are bigger than planet Earth. Oh, yes. So whatever hits the sun is going to have to be pretty big. It would to have make to be any effect very at all. big. <clears throat> uh, the word uh, pleso in the Greek is used to express this word smitten. And pleso means to strike, like a boxer hitting somebody in the face. Boom, like that. And it must be that the sun is struck by some sort of force or by some sort of matter that causes it to 
somehow alter its radiation output. Well, we know that there's an asteroid belt out between Mars and Jupiter, and um, we don't know how big some of those asteroids are, but Gary, none of them are big as the Earth. Oh, yeah. Uh, if they did go fall into the sun, it would just seem like the sun would just swallow it up. It's a staggering thought, J.R., to consider that when you see pictures of the sun with a sunspot, and it might be a tiny looking little black spot, that's bigger than planet Earth. So uh, multiple Earths could fit into the large sunspots. Therefore, it would take something very powerful indeed to alter the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In 1859, something happened. It's fascinating. It was called the Carrington event because there was a British astronomer, Richard Carrington, who had a solar observatory. And this back in 1859. His observatory was very interesting. Uh, he, th in the roof of his observatory, had a, a place where the sun could shine down and it was focused by a mirror onto a large sheet of paper. And he would trace around these sunspots and, and actually draw and keep a record of the sunspots on this sheet of paper. And every day he'd put a new sheet of paper on and, and in this way uh, trace the activities of the sun. One day, as he was tracing on his paper, his paper literally exploded in bright light brilliant light, which was blinding, and two little tiny white spots appeared, and he ran to get an assistant, and he came back, and those spots were already beginning to diminish. In other words, this was a, an explosion that was bigger than you can possibly imagine, and very short-lived. But hours later, and days later, the Earth was enveloped in a uh, particulate matter storm that caused uh, electrical disturbances all over the planet. Now, the only electrical things we had in 1859 were telegraph systems, where you stretch usually iron wires up uh, between wooden poles, and you'd have batteries and telegraph keys at either end. Well, all those batteries and telegraph keys burned up. Uh, wow. They said that paper caught fire if it was lying anywhere near a telegraph key. Uh, mm. they, Everywhere you went, there was static electricity. People, their hair stood on end. It was just a horrific nightmare. Now, Jr., if that happened today, in an age when we depend on the internet, transatlantic cables, uh, and electrical power grid, it would blow out everything. It would it? blow out everything. And it's by the grace of God that one of those coronal magnetic ejections has not hit planet Earth in the modern era. That was way back in 1859. What I'm saying is we live under God's blessing and his protection. Mm -hmm. And I'm not the least bit worried that that's going to happen until the Lord says it's time for it to happen. But it could happen, and I guess it will during the tribulation period when men are scorched with fire. Absolutely, yeah. There's going to come a time when those solar storms are going to reach the surface of planet Earth. Men shall be burnt with fervent heat. Uh, the term scorched, mm -hmm. meaning that their skin will be affected. Wow. Mm. I, I mean, I wouldn't yeah. want to be alive at that time. Now you've uh, written a few things in your article here that talks about gas stations pump gasoline with electricity so no gasoline could be pumped. Right. Uh, financial markets and banks that do business electronically, they'd close. Right. Uh, there'd be no Internet. Oh, oh that'd be terrible. That if would wasn't be terrible. Internet. Think of it, he says, everything in electrical would stop. Lights, motors, air conditioning. Uh-oh, yep. air conditioning, that'd be rough. That Heating, would. communication would cease to exist. Perhaps a few newspapers, uh, they'd be back in business. <laughs> 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 that is, if they could <coughs> get the presses to run. So, yes, um, a lot of things could uh, could happen and will during the tribulation period and all the Lord has to do is just send one of those little solar flares our way. And that's what Solomon calls life under the sun. You stop and think about it, your life is regulated. All of our energy, our crops, our fuels, everything that we have regulated by the sun. And yet, J.R., the bright side is Bright, the bright side. The bright <laughs> side. <laughs> side, okay. <laughs> is that one of these days we won't need the sun and the moon. When, at the end of the Bible, and if you haven't read it, you, you should read this. Revelation chapter 21, verses 22 through 25. 
And John looks at the temple of God, and I saw, well, there's no temple there in this new Jerusalem. He says, I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple. The city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. So our sun, let's put it this way, is kind of a temporary item. The real sun of righteousness is going to shine one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you talk about the holy city in New Jerusalem. Um, it says here in verse uh, 24, And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. Mm -hmm. Which indicates that the holy city in New Jerusalem is going to be pretty bright. Pretty bright. And it's going to shine down upon the earth. That's, uh, is it going to take the place of the sun? Apparently so, because John says there's no need for the sun or the moon. And the New Jerusalem is described as so large that it would be in appearance as large as the moon. Mm. And uh, the, the, it's amazing to think about. Imagine light, J.R. Today, if you go out in the sun, you start to get hot. You can get sunburn. You can develop skin cancer. All kinds of bad things, but in the in the the sun that shines in that day, you're not going to have to worry about all the negative effects of that light. Yeah. Utopia is coming, the kingdom is coming. God's judgment, however, will be poured out upon an unbelieving world because of it. He's got the uh, rheostat that controls the sun. He can turn <laughs> it down. He can turn it up. That's and right. He will, according to the prophets. You know, back during that Egyptian. Uh, three days of darkness, uh, the sun was uh, worshipped as a god. Yes. Men today are unduly excited over the sun. It's as if they're worshipping the sun again today. That's right. And God's going to show them that He is God. Do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? If you don't, you need to trust Him today. He's your only hope, you know. He's the only hope for this world. So I'm asking you who do not know Christ, Repent of your sins. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Tell him you're sorry and you, know, and you know you're a sinner. Ask him to forgive you and he will. He'll save you and give you eternal life. I hope you'll do that today. I'm J.R. Church and Gary Stearman. Until next time, keep looking up.